I've also been very clear that any decision that I render will be made based solely on the law and the Constitution. I have told everyone I am making no promises to you, but I can tell you that if my opponent is elected, I can tell you with 100% certainty that 1849 abortion ban will stay on the books. This seems to be a pattern for you, Janet, just telling lies about me. So you don't know what I'm thinking about that abortion ban. You have no idea. And now we actually do know how Dan Kelly, candidate for Wisconsin Supreme Court, would rule because he told an NBC affiliate in Wisconsin that he would allow the pre-Civil War ban on abortion to stand because, quote, it's consistent with the Constitution. Tomorrow, we will find out if Wisconsin voters are willing to take that chance and hand him a gavel for one of the most consequential seats on the Wisconsin Supreme Court. And joining me now is Congresswoman Gwen Moore of Wisconsin and Michelle Goldberg, columnist for The New York Times and an MSNBC political analyst. She recently profiled the race for The New York Times. Um, and, and I will start with, with you, Michelle. Um, this, your, your piece was very extensive, and it explained Mr. Kelly very well. Um, how extreme is this guy? Well, look, he was named in the January 6th um, in one of the depositions. Uh, a Wisconsin Republican Party official said that he had had, that he was part of extensive discussions about this fake elector scheme. You know, he's about, as you said, he's been campaigning with and, you know, somebody at, with a pastor who calls abortion or calls the murder of abortion doctors justifiable homicide. He's been campaigning with a Stop the Steal activist. He is, you know, kind of as far right as, as you can get. And I also, I spoke to people who had served with him on the Wisconsin Supreme Court, and they were pretty unvarnished in their both contempt for him and in their certainty that he will vote right down the line with the Republican Party at every step. And I think it's worth pointing out that although the Wisconsin Supreme Court did throw out the challenge to um, to the Wisconsin to, to the 2020 election, they did so by one vote. Right. There were three people already on the Supreme Court who were willing to disenfranchise Wisconsin voters and essentially overturn the 2020 election. So, you know, kind of democracy is by no means assured in 2024. And, and Representative Moore, you've been very um, open and, and talked about uh, the, 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 the issue of abortion that is personal to you, that you've had an experience um, that makes this a personal issue for you. But I wonder, you know, how personally Wisconsin voters, those in your district, those who you're talking to on the ground, how, how seriously, I mean, it's hard to get people to come out uh, for an April election. You know, I think they're, they're made off year the, in this way for a reason. To, to, to produce low turnout. Are people focused on this race? Listen, thank you all. Thank you. Good to see you, Michelle, and thank you, Joy. Absolutely. Because it's not just the right to abortion, which is very, very important, but it's the right to a fair trial and a fair justice. You, you guys have made great points, but the really point that I wanted you to make is that he just seems to be a, a, a good old boy for the grand old party. You know, he's willing to support these fake electors. And so the abortion ban, the lack of the access to the ballot, uh, lack of the ability to have fair uh, political lines, uh, this is really a threat to democracy, not only in Wisconsin, but around the country, which is why you have seen this be a nationwide campaign in the fight to really define uh, 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 whether or not we're going to have a judiciary that is impartial. Um, you know, this is supposed to be a nonpartisan race, but it certainly is not. This is the main, main stalwart candidate of the GOP. And, you know, Michelle, you know, one of the things I got out of your piece is, I mean, the gerrymandering of Wisconsin from Scott Walker on mm -hmm. has really created minority rule in the state. You know, the state's majority is overwhelmingly yeah. in favor of abortion being legal. They can't have that with the Supreme Court. Um, the gerrymandering means that Republicans have more control than they got votes in terms of the percentages. And they can just have this lock on the state and try to disempower the, the Democratic governor to not allow the governor to exercise the powers people elected him for. I mean, the Talk about how this state and the results could radiate outside of Wisconsin in 2024. 
Well, yeah, like you said, Wisconsin has been a pioneer in minority rule. Both after Scott Walker was elected, there was a set of extremely gerrymandered maps. Now they've since adopted even more gerrymandered maps by order of the current Supreme Court. And so what, the, according to one analysis that I quoted, Democrats would have to win by more than 12 points to take a bare majority of the legislature. So Republicans have basically locked it up. And a couple of years ago, when, Demo when the Wisconsinites elected a Democratic governor and a Democratic attorney general, this Republican legislature very quickly voted to strip them of all of their, or not all of their powers, but strip them of many of their powers. That was also upheld by this current Supreme Court. So this is like the one election that could undo the Republican, the decade-long Republican lock on power in Wisconsin and restore democracy, which would mean that in a you know in a, in a state as evenly split as Wisconsin is, you'll have kind of alternations of power. And, and Representative Moore, you know, the train that's never late is attempting to suppress the black vote. That's happening now. Um, the right is throwing accusations against uh, the woman candidate, on uh, Janet um, Protasiewicz, trying to claim that she used the N-word, as if Republicans' main concern in the world is people using the N-word, as if they, you know, are just heart sick over that possibility. Um, is the African-American community focused on the goal here and uh, not standing to fall for that kind of thing? Well, listen, we know that this was an, an act of desperation on the part of, uh, of Republicans to win this election. I'm even close to accusing them of planning the bad weather we're expecting to have tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> but all, you know, seriously, you know, when you know, I'm looking at this with the same sort of seriousness yeah. that people are looking at illegal acts of Netanyahu in Israel or Georgia, yeah. or, you know, this is a problem for our democracy nationwide. Yeah. Get out there and Absolutely. go fight the storm. Absolutely. It is a critical race. We'll be watching it. Congresswoman Gwen Moore, Michelle Goldberg, thank you both.